In this video, we'll learn how to draw organic structures. So far, we've learned how to draw Lewis structures, which shows all the atoms and all the connectivity between the atoms, like the one drawn here. And this is handy when we're drawing smaller molecules. But when we draw larger molecules in organic chemistry, it becomes really cumbersome to start drawing out every single bond and every single atom. Instead, you might see what we call condensed structures. And condensed structures, the carbon and hydrogen bonds and the carbon-carbon bonds are shortened. So instead of drawing out every CH or every CC single bond, we tend to shorten it. And we understand that they're still present, but we don't draw it out. So it becomes a little quicker to at least draw, draw out our structures like this. So you can have condensed where we show the branching still or even where we don't show the branching, but we know that this carbon here has both of these methyl groups attached to it. Both of these are considered condensed structures. Our one over here is our Lewis structure. And you can see how we can take this Lewis structure and turn it into our condensed structure. We can even condense it down further. So if we were to type it out in a report or something, we can just type out the formula like this. And then we'll know that it is still the formula for 2-methylbutane. But even condensed structures can become cumbersome when we have extremely large molecules. So if we have a really large molecule like taxol, it becomes extremely cumbersome to even draw the condensed structure. Instead, what we typically do in organic chemistry is we tend to draw what we call line structures or skeletal structures. And so in our line or skeletal structures, a couple things. Carbon atoms are usually not shown. Usually, most of the time we don't show them, on occasion we might. And the carbon atom is assumed to be at each intersection of two lines. And at the end of each line. So each of the lines we draw represents a bond. So if we draw two lines that connect to each other, those two bonds and in the center is supposed to be a carbon atom. Hydrogen atoms bonded to carbon are not shown. If the hydrogen atom is bonded to another element besides carbon, then it is shown. So if we have something like it bonded to oxygen, we could show that. Bonded to a nitrogen, we can show that. Even a sulfur. But we just don't bother showing the CH bond because that is an extremely common bond we see in organic chemistry. Other atoms besides carbon and hydrogen, we do show. So again, if we have an oxygen, a nitrogen, sulfur, fluorine, chlorine, or bromine, or iodide, we'll add that in there, we would show these atoms. So we'll say draw the atom. But if it's a C or H, We don't draw it. So a couple examples. If we look at isoprene, isoprene has a formula C5H8. If you're just given this formula, you wouldn't know much information about it. But if we draw out its Lewis structure, we can see that it has two double bonds in it. There's a methyl group. And even this, still a little, not too bad to draw. Really not that bad drawing but we can draw it as a skeletal. So you can see here the CH on the end here, these two hydrogens, we no longer draw the hydrogens. And it's assumed that there's a carbon here at the very end. And since we know carbon has to make four bonds, there has to be two hydrogens attached. And then our next one, the carbon in the middle here, you can see this carbon doesn't have any hydrogens on it. And we can count it has one, two, three, four bonds. Since it has four bonds, I know there's no hydrogens attached to that carbon. Then there's a line that goes up and just kind of ends. If the line ends like this, that still represents a carbon. Because see, we have our methyl group. And if it's a carbon here, I have one bond drawn, which means it has to have three hydrogens to fill up the four bonds that carbon always has. And then we can come down to our next carbon here that starts our second double bond. Again, you can see here, it's at the corner of where two lines meet. And there's one, two, three lines drawn to that corner. The fourth one is missing. So the fourth one has to be a hydrogen. 
So you can see whenever we draw a skeletal structure, I can assume the number of hydrogens based on making carbon have four bonds. So we can make ourselves a little note. So we always assume carbon makes four bonds. And with those four bonds, anything less than four, I'm going to assume those are hydrogens. So if we go to our next structure here, we can see methyl cyclohexane C7H14. Now we're getting a little bigger. Trying to draw that out actually starts to become kind of cumbersome. So if you try to draw this out on your own, it takes some time. We don't have time to draw all these structures. We don't want to spend all that time drawing these structures. We want to make it easier on ourselves. So then we switch it to the skeletal structure. You can see drawing the skeletal structure much quicker and easier than trying to draw out the Lewis structure. And you can see at each point here on the hexane ring, so at each point on our hexagon here, there's going to be two hydrogens, except this one. This one, since it has one, two, three bonds, there's only one hydrogen and our methyl group. Our last one we look at is phenol. Phenol is C6H6O. So you can see here, it has alternating double bond, single bond in the ring. Still has a six membered ring. So if anything in this class, you're going to become really good at drawing six membered rings. If you're not very good at it now, I suggest practicing because we see them a lot. And so you can see it's still, it's not that bad looking, but still kind of busy if we look at the structure. It's, bu it's a busy drawing. And then when we switch it over to the skeletal structure, I don't draw any of those CHs, but I do draw that OH. Since that's not a carbon, I have to draw that atom. And then I draw the hydrogen attached to it, just like we said up here. So now let's try and practice a couple of these. If we want to draw our formulas, so let's say we have, we'll start easy, CH3, CH3. We also have another one, CH3, CH2, OH. So you can see I'm writing them as a condensed formula just to make things quicker and easier. Now let's try something a little trickier. CH3, 2, and H. And then finally, see if y'all can get this one, CH3, CH2, 4, CH3. So what I want you to do, try to draw the skeletal structure. If you need to draw the Lewis structure first, do that and then convert it over to a skeletal structure. Pause the video, try to do the drawings. And then when you're done, unpause the video to see if you got it right. Okay, you're done? Good, let's see how you did. CH3, CH3, pretty straightforward. If we wanted to draw Lewis structure, I'd have my carbon with those three hydrogens attached to it for each of those, not too bad. Or it could be a line. Hey, look how quick and easy that one is. Our next one, CH3, CH2, OH, ethanol. If we were to draw ethanol, and I draw its Lewis structure. I can see we have our carbons and hydrogens and our oxygens. Now drawing a Lewis structure, we can also draw the lone pairs if you still need to, but we assume those lone pairs are there. We assume we can get to the octet. In this class, the octet rule is what really matters. And so if we're to draw the line structure, Hey, look how much quick and easier that one is. So now for the slightly trickier one, CH32, NH. Let's see if you guys got it right. CH3, and another CH3, and an H, one pair. So 
you can see we have two methyl groups attached to that nitrogen. Since I have the two methyl groups in parentheses, it means they're both attached to this nitrogen here. But you can see when I'm drawing it out, it gets a little crowded here. I had to make it a little smaller. If we were to draw its Lewis structure, it could look something like that. Or sorry, if we draw its line structure, it can look something like that. So final one, CH3, CH2, 4, CH3. Let's see if we can draw hexane. So if we were to draw hexane and draw it as a Lewis structure, I think I might need to give myself a little space here. We'll draw top to bottom Lewis structure. One, two, three, four, five, six, hydrogen. There's my two methyl groups, one on each end. And then I have my CH2 that's in the middles. I have four of them. So each of these carbons gets two hydrogens attached to it. So you see how long that took me to draw it out. It takes a little bit of time when you get to these bigger molecules. It took you guys a little bit of time, right? If we were to draw its line structure, five, six. We end up with one, two, three, four, five, six. Look how much quicker and easier that is. And you can see in organic chemistry, when we're drawing our line structures, if it's a chain of carbons, we make it zigzag. That represents the tetrahedral shape of that carbon. So since it represents the tetrahedral shape, we zigzag it. So now hopefully you guys can start drawing your skeletal structures or line structures. Since we're gonna be converting to that and using that most of the time from now on. So remember when you were drawing our line structures, we don't show the carbons. We don't show the CHs. We do show, so remember a couple of things with your line structures. We don't show carbon atoms most of the time. We don't show carbon atoms that are single bonded. We don't show, we don't show CHs. We do show other atoms, heteroatoms, our O's, our oxygen, oops. We do show heteroatoms, our oxygens, our nitrogens, our chlorines, bromines, iodines, all of those. We do show hydrogens attached to those other atoms. So it's really, if it's a CH, if it's a dealing with carbon, that's when we try to condense it down and make it easier on ourselves. And you can see how much easier it gets when we get to our bigger molecules like hexane, took up a lot of space doing a Lewis structure. Line structure, barely any space, much quicker. So now you guys should be able to draw your line structures.